Hello, you're watching The Quantum Healer, and I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Tracy Allshafer. Today, I have the privilege of talking to Al Dumapid, who is a Qigong energy practitioner. So we're gonna be talking about this ancient practice of Qigong, mm -hmm. which is very exciting. Why, why, thank you, Tracy. Thank, thank you, you for being here, Al. No, well, it, it was cold. I needed somewhere to go that was warm. <laughs> Lots of studio light. <laughs> Just moved in here like mice. <laughs> it is nice and toasty in the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. So um, for people who have no idea what Qigong is, mm -hmm. Let's give them a little history of where did this start? What is it? Mm -hmm. um, my limited understanding is yeah. that it originated in China. Correct. Several yeah. thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I've taught and practiced yoga for a long time, so yeah. I see it as a very similar type of practice as yoga that kind of developed I think around the same time in India and China, but kind of went their own way in in talking about energy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. in yoga we call it prana, mm -hmm. and in Qigong I think it's qi, mm -hmm. right? Or qi or qi. Qi, qi yeah. So, yeah. Um, so let's tell us a little bit about these origins. Okay, so uh, as far as China's concerned, um, there's obviously heated debate about exactly where it started. Okay. Uh, it goes can be as old as 7,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, ancient scholars in Asia found uh, ancient vases, and on the vases were imprinted um, pictures of, of shaman priest masters doing meditation and certain qigong postures, mm -hmm. or, or uh, what they call gymnastic postures. Right. And so it could go as far as that. But officially, um, it goes back around 5,000 years ago. Most medical qigong scholars agree that uh, it was started under uh, the Yellow Emperor, another mythical <laughs> person, yeah. and uh, he gathered this information and, and created this medical text uh, for medical qigong. Okay. okay. So, uh, so that leads us to what I do, which is a certain more modern version. But we could talk about that okay. later. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So medical qigong. I never yeah. heard it called that before. Yeah, there. Again, you'll, you'll hear much uh, debate about how many categories of Qigong are there. Um, I always thought there was just three, and then recently my mind has been opened up to four or five branches. Okay. Okay. But medical Qigong is, uh, well, first of all, what is Qigong? Okay. okay. Uh, Qigong is an Asian or Chinese methodology of manipulating the essential life force, mm -hmm. all right, which is energy. And they call that Qi, all right? And you said they call it prana in India. Right. They say in Japan it's key. I mean, it's kind of um, Joseph Campbell's uh, Hero with a Thousand Faces. You know, th there's only like one or two ways to manipulate energy, and depending on the cultural context, you're going right. to get different ways of labeling it. So mm -hmm. in China, they call it uh, qi. <laughs> you know, and it, and when it was organized under the Yellow Emperor, it was meant for health, wellness, healing, and longevity. Okay. okay. But getting back to the original question, look, what are these various qigongs? Where you have medical qigong. You have martial qigong, and okay. the most popular exponents of that are like the Shaolin monks of China. They they use this technology of manipulating life force for defense and offense. Okay, not just for longev longevity or, or anything like that. So you have uh, martial qigong, you have medical qigong, and you have spiritual qigong. Um, again, in China, the the better uh, common proponents of this are the B Buddhist monks, okay. who harness this energy, circulate through their body to achieve enlightenment or awareness or liberation. All right, because um, um, one can say that their soul is an energy form, and by mastering energy around you and within you, you can control that energy, so that you can you know control your reincarnation and and and, and the way you move through life. Okay, and then you have something called scholarly qigong, uh, which is qigong that helps. Well, scholarly, not in a traditional Western way. Scholarly, okay. um, from the ideal of the Renaissance man in China. I think the term was jinza or jinzu. You know, uh, uh, where you use the qigong as part of everything else in your life, so they can move through your life ele elegantly, whether you're defending yourself in martial art, or trying to be a good family man, or, or moving through your job for prosperity, Qigong is there too, you know, because all is energy, you're always interchanging with things. And then that, that gives us, what, four? And then, yeah. And, and then there's longevity Qigong, which are specialized practices for um, 
immortality training. <laughs> yeah, so again, it's very difficult. See, it's very yeah, similar yeah, to yeah. yoga because yoga yeah. has the same thing. They have these higher levels that also talk about immortality. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, that's also a debate. Do they mean, you know, especially in China with the Taoists, uh, they're obviously striving for a long physical life. But then uh, if you read some of their classics, I think it was like the, uh, uh, what, the yellow, the, the, the book of the yellow robe or something like this, where they talk about... Uh, uh, actually, it's about harnessing and creating this uh, um, energy body and being able to control that so that when your physical body goes away, you can then it reincarnate on purpose to a, a, another young, appropriate body. Right. You know? So there's all ways of interpreting that, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, and especially when you're going back 7,000 years, a lot of it is mixed with mythology right. you know, and all this. So we, we don't know what's real, unreal, but uh, basically uh, Qigong is the manipulation of that life force for specific ends, you know, to maximize mm. human potential. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is working on every part or every layer of the human, so not mm -hmm. just the physical. Although I think, again, yeah. similar to yoga, a lot of people will think it's a physical practice. and. There's truth to that, but mm -hmm. there's also these other dimensions and layers to it, as you're saying. Like it, it completely um, transforms or helps heal or elevates. What well, all these words? The whole human person. Right, right, right. Again, it's 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 part of. Um, I would, if we had to modernize a term, uh, human potential. Yeah. And the human potential movement, maximizing your life to physically live as well and as long as you can, your mind to be as clear as it can. Um, you know, your spirit, you know, right. which is the enlightenment part of it, you yeah. know, uh, so that you and, and whatever God you believe in is right or mm -hmm. atheistic, that you're in harmony with with that which is around you. Uh, and so your God is the world and am I living and, and you know, uh, obeying the laws of the world the right way, you know, mm -hmm. so however you want to put your devotion. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go back to the types of Qigong you mentioned mm -hmm. in the Marshall mm -hmm. um, with the Shalom Masters. Mm -hmm. So is what they developed, is that what we call Tai Chi or is Tai Chi something totally different? Yeah, I, I think the Shaolin monks, now I'm not a specialist in that, okay. uh, the Shaolin monks uh, I think either co-current develop or even predate um, the development of Tai Chi. Okay. okay. So right. uh, Tai Chi is also a martial form. From what I remember, it was it was a way to maximize economy, where you could learn a martial art, maintain your longevity, and also be able to move in the world in a graceful way. Okay. All right. So you have all of that in Tai Chi. Yeah. And it's also a moving meditation. Right. Right. Where in the Shaolin order. Um, it start, the Shaolin started purely as meditative monks. Okay. And they noticed that their bodies weren't doing great when you're sitting around for hours and hours, years at right. a time. Right. And so they started to observe the animals, they learned how to mimic those animal forms, and in mimicking, making, mimicking those forms, they came up with the Kung Fu. All right, the, uh, and Kung Fu not as in the martial aspect, but as a way of living, mm -hmm. um, which includes protection from danger. All right? And as they start to observe these various forms, they Want, with their increased awareness, they started to, because they're meditators, they started to notice uh, movements of energy you know, or prana or, mm -hmm. or however you call it, running from the world into them and out again. All right, and there they developed their own style of energy manipulation and qigong. All right, and so now you have Shaolin Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. All right, and they do all kinds of things gotcha. with that. But I think that's definitely a separate development okay. than Tai Chi, which is under a specific master who created it okay. in certain provinces. And there, uh, just like uh, the Shaolin monks, they've incorporated Qigong, which has been around for 7,000 years, uh, mm -hmm. and officially under the Yellow Emperor, 5,000 yeah, years, right. um, brought it into their system of movement. All right, but it's, it was a separate development. You know, as you're talking, I'm thinking about, um, you're talking about Buddhists who are sitting for long periods of time yeah. mm -hmm. and had to develop these practices, right? Because mm -hmm. not good for the body to sit for long periods of time. Yeah. And as you're saying this, I'm thinking about how many people today are sitting for long periods of time. They're not in meditation, though. They're right. on their computer. Right. 
but they're sitting for long periods of time. And so how a practice like this, which we're gonna show you some very simple practices, um, can really benefit you if you're sitting at a desk, if you're, you know, whatever you're doing during yeah. the day is a lot of sitting. Right, And right, I th right, right. Another thing I love about these practices is I think you can do they're for all ages you yes. you know most people can do what we're going to show you. Yeah, yeah. And again, this is where we get into the variety of various types of qigong. So obviously Let's talk about that. Yeah. yeah so uh, qigong in the Shaolin tradition especially is very rigorous and you're you're brought into the temple at a very young age, you know, 10 years old, 11, start your training, standing on your head and all that. So you know, most of the people in the audience I'm sure are not going to get involved we're with that. We're not going to have you standing. <laughs> <head>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, now I practice uh, Confucian qigong, okay? Confucian uh, based yeah. on Confucius. Confucius. Yes, <laughs> Mencius and Confucius and and so one could say that the origins of this, so you had this developing um, culture of body movement, energy awareness, and so some of the population start to bring in the teachings of Confucius with it and came up with Confucian Qigong, which is an offshoot of scholar Qigong. Or, or I always thought it was more spiritual because of the, the tenets of it, but ultimately it's scholar Qigong because it's about a refinement of how to move gracefully, gracefully through your life, be most effective, you, that kind of thing. And so I guess one way of looking at the practice with something slightly more familiar is it's slightly more like uh, Chan Buddhism, they call that in, in Asia, or Zen, where you're really developing your awareness and your mindfulness into day to day, okay? Um, not being reactive to the things that are going on in the world. So there's a strong self-awareness and med meditative component to Confucian Qigong and some basic exercises just to keep the body limber, uh, to keep the meridian lines, which is the 12 major channels that run through the body in acupunctural medicine or medical Qigong. So to keep this energy flowing, all right? Mm -hmm. So it's like your uh, energy highway, okay? okay. So, so that you can not be too reactive to the world and stay moving and reacting in your, quote, highest virtue. Right. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell the audience a little mm -hmm. bit about Confucius? Because maybe they don't know who he is or what that um, Confucianism is. So just as a quick. Yeah, I, he, he was a scholar uh, roughly around, I think, uh, f at this point, uh, 4,000 years ago. Um, um, and he, his writings, now I don't know much about Confucius because I never really focused on it as much. But I, I did read a lot of his an analectics and texts and stuff like that. And he pretty much focused on the harmony of, of society and life. So if you're harmonized in your personal surroundings, this will harmonize the community, which are villages, and these villages will be in harmony with the overall governing body, which is the country. And, and so he, his philosophy was always looking for um, how does one operate in harmony with all things? You know, uh, so not just in spirit, and, and he wasn't shooting for enlightenment. He was, he was an individual who focused on um, making life happen well now. Mm. Okay, so a lot of Confucian writing focuses on the concept of family, that the government is one big family, and then of course you have your own personal family, and perhaps the body is a corpus, a family as well of of various diverse elements that you have to harmonize, mm -hmm. and so. As far as my very rudimentary understanding of Confucius, uh, I feel that that's what he was going for. So Qigong is the is are these practices? Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do a couple of Confucian based Qigong, Qigong yeah. mm -hmm. practices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and let's when we do these, we'll explain what what each one does, right. what the benefits of it are, and right. um, and then if you want, you can practice along with us. So, are you ready to show them some of these? Yeah, some, some very big basic stuff. All right, okay. we're going to show you just three, I think, basic things that you can do right. every day. Yes, yeah, the every day. Let's do the most basic type of warm-up is shaking. Okay. Right, you do this for, you know, five to ten minutes or so. And, and I guess officially you put your feet together, okay? Oh, okay. All right, and then you pull it out this way. And then from the front balls of the feet, pull up and back. Good. Toes should be moving forward. If you look down, you notice your, your tops of your knees just slightly cover 
uh, the tops of the toes Kay. so you don't see them. Not, not too much, then you're bending too much, not too high where you could actually see the toes. That's the good okay. uh, measure. And then you basically bop up and down like this. <laughs> you shake up and down. You know, loosen shoulders, especially around your neck. Feel free to just, you know, move it around. Um, and and then, then you could move a little to the left while you're shaking like this, right? Good. And you really want to relax like your mm -hmm. body, your upper body, right? Yeah, so you want to relax. It starts with the head, the torso, and the waist, and move to the right. And eventually you want that relaxation to go all the way to your knees, to your ankles, to the joints in your toes themselves. All right, you want to relax the whole body. And, th and this is good because it warms it up. You start to breathe naturally from the belly. Yeah, I want to take deep breaths now, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. And you're circulating, and this is a good way of waking up those joints. It loosens up the joints, and it keeps you flexible. So instead of doing all that heavy yoga, this actually is a good flexibility exercise. We actually do this. This is a yoga technique, too. Oh, I wasn't aware. Okay, you're big ups for, for <laughs> yoga. <laughs> you know? All right, so this, again, five to 10 minutes, you do this, you relax, great. And then, and then a big part of Confucian Qigong is music. Because again, it's about de dealing with awareness, uh, in the sound in your head. So if you're playing uh, uh, rhythmic music similar to this pattern, so you don't want obviously um, hip hop or, <laughs> or something like not that. I, like I love that too, you know. Okay. All right, you know, like heavy D, all right, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But 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 something that will go like boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom, boom. So this way you you um, you and then you can shake your arms up back and forth very gently. Again, you want to target. Points of connection, uh, elbow, wrist, finger, finger joints. Just relax. Can you shake your wrist, or is that yes, not a thing? Yes, that'll okay. be fine too. Well, not, not again. Nothing too heavy. Nothing just too like heavy. that. Like that. That's it. And then you just slowly come back. All right. And as you slowly come back, you know, each leg, lift one leg up, shake it a bit. You know, shake it a bit. And that's your that's your basic warm up. You, know, you can do that at your desk, by the side of your bed. And you do want to do this in the morning, the shaking. Yes. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't want to have so much stirring as right. you're going to bed. And yeah. I don't know if you felt it, but like, like I can feel so much more chi moving through, moving the, body through the body after just that little bit of shaking, shaking for yeah. a couple of minutes that we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many minutes should you do that? Five, ten minutes. Five to ten minutes or of shaking. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so what's the second? The second is the stimulation of the kidney one point. Okay, so okay. in uh, acupunctural medicine or Qigong, the kidney one point is a major entry and exit point for energy in the body, okay? Okay. So qi, all right, it, it goes from the earth, right, through the soles of the feet, into the body, into the kidney one point, all right, which, which actually runs from the soul here, that, which also, that line runs from here, like right it's here. like a, a canal, right? Yeah. Around the ankle, up the back of the leg, to this point behind the knee. So if you, if you do this, uh, well, okay, like this. Yes. <laughs> and you, you locate the two tendons behind the knee and the center, that's, that's one of the major channel ah, points. Okay. Up the back, right? Through the perineum point, which is a point between your genitals and your and your anus, and then it just splits over and goes into the uh, to the kidneys to the to top the of the kidney, top of the kidney. and that's called the kidney one line. Okay? okay, and that's a major point of entry and exit, exit point for negative energies or or toxic energy waste, and then bring in fresh energy from the earth, the sky, and all of that. Okay. Okay. So the second one is stimulating that kidney one point. So the okay. first thing is to locate it, stimulate it, and then be aware of it. Okay. okay, so I'll do that sitting down so you know what's going on. Okay. So, so mm -hmm. put your, your, your uh, foot here, cross-legged fashion. Okay. You pull the top of the toes. What if they can't do this? Oh. What if you they had like a tennis ball or something? Could they use that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you could locate, because I'll show you the physical location. All right. And if you have like a really small ball, you could step on it and then go and roll, roll it back it. and forth and locate this point. Right. And you'll physically feel, it's about self-awareness. You're okay. going to physically feel this point. Because there are some people that... This is like not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. So okay. you pull the toe back. Pull the toe back. And then you cut this line from the top of the foot down. Okay. Okay. You, you locate the center of your foot. Now, as you go down this foot, it's gonna go into a depression. Uh huh. That's your kidney one point. Okay. okay? That's where the energy goes in and out, right? So yeah. once you've located it, it's good to just you know 
you know, rub it back and forth just a little bit. All right, and then with the blade of your hand, practice, that's it. With the edge, edge of your hand, there you go, back and forth. Um, this is gonna be about 100 times, guys. 100 times. 100 times, 100, <laughs> 100 times is fine. Keep sawing back and forth. Um, if, you, if you're in a hurry, you could break it down to let's say 30, but it should be at least 100 times. Should you be, I'm using this side of my hand, yeah, does that matter? That's fine, yeah. Okay. You want the blade because what's going on here is you're, you're stimulating this area, all right? And again, this is also reflexology. There's a lot going on. There's the center of the body and you're stimulating it, so you're stimulating other points throughout your whole body. Okay. So as we were saying before, mm -hmm. if you cannot sit like this, if this is too difficult, get a tennis ball or some kind of some ball with that kind of consistency and then one and then kind of roll along the bottom of the foot until you find that spot. Yeah. And a hundred times. Mm hmm You could do that. Yeah. And then Okay. So we assume we did a hundred <laughs> and then we do did hundred here. And Same thing. Go back. Go back. Locate that point. Okay. And, and then I'm once we do that, we're sawing hundred times. 100 yeah. times. Thirty to hundred, you know, like that. And then, you know, again, being present, feeling the sensations, right? Knowing what it feels like, getting that stimulation there, very, very good for you. Okay, okay good. And what this does is it uh, opens up that, that kidney one point right there, and it allows uh, energy to flow in and out. Okay, this is our, this is our primal energy into the, uh, into the earth. Okay. So this is also, I would think very helpful for people that are in their heads a lot and not very grounded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not feeling very grounded or people that suffer from maybe anxiety, things mm -hmm. like that. This is a really good grounding technique, yeah. I think. Yeah, it puts them into their feet, literally. Let's yep. put your mind to your feet, give it to the earth. Another way of looking at it, it's gonna give it to the earth, you know, and then bring in all that good stuff coming up. All right. I like it. Yeah, and you do that, just, just stay present, you know. And then um, once you're done, you just put your, your feet together, palms over your knees just a little, put your mind into your belly and below your belly, and just, just breathe. You can really feel a lot of energy in yeah. the feet and connecting to the earth, a lot right. of energy. Right, yeah. because you've awakened those points and now you're, you're circulating it back and forth. Okay, so then the final exercise is called stirring, which is a really, really important exercise, at least in, um, in, in this particular style of Qigong. Um, but actually you'll find that most of the Chinese practices focus on um, this lower belly area. So in Japan, they call it the hara. Uh, in Chinese uh, medicine and Qigong, we call it the dantian or lower dantian, which means field of force or, f or vortex of energy. Uh, if you locate your belly button about an inch below this okay. area, all right, which is over the groin area, that's the lower dantian. All right, that's that's in charge mm -hmm. of your physical well-being. Um, let's say you're having problems, your mind's too much. You want to take the energy of your mind and put it into here because this could take a lot of excess energy because it's associated with your evacuation systems, urine, feces, whatever, and it it shoots out. All right, and and in this case, the negative energy will shoot out to the ball, the, to the soles of the feet you know, and then you could replace it. But for the basic practice, for longevity, also clearing your mind and all this, you wanna locate and nurture that first lower dantian. All right, so again, getting into that toes forward po posture and you slightly bent, you cup your hand like this, so you know, nothing too splayed open. And for women, it's the left hand. Uh, no, no, it, it's, it's, it's really, the, it depends, are you uh, left or right-handed? Depends. I'm right-handed. Okay, so with the right hand, it's the way you stir, all right? Oh, so okay, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which side you're, you're stirring from, it's the movement of the stirring. Okay. For men, it's right to left, so you're stirring right to left. For women, it's left to right. Okay. Reverse the stirring. Okay. Okay. And again, this is about one to 300 stirs, okay? Yeah. But you, you relax. You're gonna be here for a couple hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, actually, and it doesn't take that long. No, because after you, you get really used to it, you move quickly like this. This is like people Oh, so fast. this one you can move fast. Yes, yeah, you can move faster if you get used to it. Again, this is about developing awareness. So in the beginning, you wanna move slowly okay. because as you cup your hand, you're gently going over just maybe half an inch or so over that lower dantian area. And again, what is the lower dantian? It's about an inch or so traditionally below the, the, the navel of the belly. Mm -hmm. And you're just stirring like that, stirring. 
and then sometimes it's okay to brush over the area. Oh, so you don't have to have area. like full palm on the area. No, doesn't need full palm. Um, you want to, uh, ultimately you want to develop a sensation so that when you're even, let's say, I'm not even touching myself anymore, okay. I can still feel that stir. Yep. Yeah. And I want to say too, I think a lot of people don't give enough attention to this area of their body. Like mm -hmm. I even remember being younger and not liking to even have my anywhere in my stomach touched. Right. And I think a lot of people like kind of ignore, especially if they're carrying a little bit of extra weight in this area of the body, mm -hmm. and just like mm -hmm. ignore it. Mm -hmm. But this is really bringing, and I even feel, I even feel like this stirring of energy is almost pulling me in. Does that make yes, sense? Yes, yes, yeah. That is a common thing that people who do this practice, they feel like it's shrinking in. Yeah. And that's good because you're bringing in the field. You're bringing in right. the, the entire Right. So maybe field. the energy field, because of lack of awareness or not enough, it's kind of out. morphed out or blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right? right. And now it's kind of like I can feel the field coming in. Yeah. You're pulling and it in. And I can feel the physical part of me also tightening in. Yep. Yeah, and that's what you're looking for. You're looking for this like mind-body connection. Yep. You know, your, your, your mind is connecting to the body, and as you're taking hold of it by inducing effects like this, um, you're saying, oh, I'm aware of what's going on in my body right. and in my energy field. I love this. Yeah, this and, then, and then you become very, very, very aware of how energy moves and feels and all of this. And again, two to three hundred times, and now you are situated in the lower so, dantian. Yeah. Now you're ready for the day, you know? Now and, you're ready. And those are the basic three things that you could do every day to awaken the, the kidney one line for energy to come in and out. Um, shaking is just good warm up. It's a sort of a check on uh, where am I stiff? Uh, where am I weak? Where am I, am, am I even ready for my day? Mm -hmm. And this is a good maintenance where your mind goes to the lower dantian and this is your battery, okay? This has to be recharged. Let's say you're weak, this will recharge you. Um, let's say you have too much, things will bring in. If you're overstimulated, it'll bring it all in. So this is. If, if there's one thing you gotta mm -hmm. do out of all okay. three, this is the most important. It's the basic Qigong practice for that, yeah. And I feel like we could talk about Qigong a mm -hmm. lot longer. There's a lot more things we could teach and, and right. practice, but mm -hmm. this is just like a little segment for everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so Al, I really wanna thank you for oh, taking welcome. your time right. and yeah. coming in today sure. and teaching us the origins of Qigong, some right. simple Qigong practices, mm -hmm. um, and you can feel them very very quickly. It's yeah, not something yeah. that takes time to build. Although, as you're saying, the mindfulness and the other advanced practices do come with more practice and more yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, think your awareness develops to a hyper level over years of practice. <laughs> well, there you go. All so right. thank you for coming in today and thank sharing you. this ancient practice with All our right. audience. And, yeah. uh, you know, one of my old teachers used to say mm -hmm. something sticks around this long because it works, right? Oh yeah, 7,000 so, 7, years, folks. <laughs> or more, or because more. that's yeah. only what we know or has been discovered. So this is yeah. very ancient practice and it, and it mm. still is being practiced because it works. So yeah, yeah stand up and shake. Mm. Sitting down at your desk your on feet. a Zoom call, you could be working that kidney boy. Yeah, yep, yeah. Stir, <laughs> bank line, grocery and then store. Stir. Yeah. yeah, and you can do it all day. Yeah, you're your own party at that point. <laughs> you know, okay. All right. Thank Thanks again, Alan. All right. Thank you're you. welcome.